right now. Talk to him on your own right now. Let him know you love him. Let him know you love him right now. Come on, lift up holy hands with our wrath of doubting. Magnify the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Say it. Say so. Say so this morning. Tell him you love him. Thanks. He's able. Back him up. He's able. God is. God is. God is. He's able. Don't you give up on God. Cause he won't and never have given up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. Come on, say it. Say he's it. able. Say it from your heart. He's God able. God is. He's able. He's able. To do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask, anything you can think of. He can heal your body. He can send the money. He can fix whatever's broken. Somebody say, he's able, he's able, he's able. Clap your hands one more time. That's somebody's word this morning. You're going through some things that you think are difficult or impossible to deal with. He's able. Yes, he is. Amen. You love him this morning? Yeah. Let's go in the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. We're going to actually be in all three of the synoptic gospels on this morning. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're going to be in the 10th. You know what? Meet me in the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew because I'm going to read one scripture from the 10th chapter. Then we'll go over into the ninth chapter of the book of Mark and conclude in Dr. Luke's narrative. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 says, And when he had called unto him twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, and I'm going to leave that right there and go over to the 17th chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. And when they would come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. The child was cured from that very hour. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. St. Mark chapter 9. We're going to look over and see Mark's perspective on this event. 14th verse. And when he had when he came to his disciples, Mark 9, 14, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, 
what question ye with them? And one of the multitudes answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. Enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and ran him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up until he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth but not by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Final reading, Luke chapter 10. You can meet me there if you want to, or you can take my word for it, then I'm going to read it correctly. <laughs> the first verse, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where the he himself would come. Verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Father, bless us this morning upon our reception of your word, and we give you glory in advance for the blessings we expect, we anticipate receiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen one more time. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody give God a shout of glory real quick. Amen. The gospel, the, can I take my time? <coughs> my voice never gets dry till Sunday morning. <laughs> Running my mouth all week long. Somebody say, you need to shut up there and save, save that. <laughs> time is Sunday morning, come along, I get a scratch. The gospel. The gospel means good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. According to the first of the synoptic gospels, the book of Matthew, begins with, if you read Matthew from the beginning, you'll see it begins with the genealogy of Jesus, tracing uh, his ancestry down through the line of his stepfather, Joseph, establishing his right to the kingdom. Amen. If you read other genealogies, they trace his uh, ancestry through his mother, Mary, Amen. And she's an ancestor of David's as well. You know, if the Davidic monarchy had been in existence at that time, Jesus would have been the rightful king. Amen. Through the line of David, he would have been the king of Israel in the natural if the Davidic monarchy had existed and had not been replaced by the Herods. Amen. So Matthew starts off with the genealogy. Then he gives the nativity story of Jesus' birth, the coming of the wise men to worship him, then their, their uh, flight, their journey into Egypt, and then he mentions their return to Nazareth. Amen. And he then begins to unfold his story of Jesus' life, amen. In the story of the baptism by John at the River Jordan, we see Jesus accepting his task, accepting the call of God on his life. The Spirit of the Lord descended upon him in the form of a dove, amen, or as a dove. He didn't, he didn't come down looking like a bird. It wasn't like a bird landed on Jesus, and it was the Holy Ghost. He descended as a dove. Amen. Came down slowly. 
Amen. The Bible says in Acts 10, 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It happened right there at the Jordan River. And then we see Jesus accepting his task. After that, we see him being led by the same spirit that anointed him into the wilderness to be tempted, tested, tried, challenged by the devil. The devil actually challenging him with the word of God. Amen. Or his, his, um, a deviation or his uh, erroneous interpretation of the word of God and Jesus answered him right back with the word of God because you know oftentimes when you're fighting the devil that's your best line of ammunition amen I know a preacher one time that was talking to me I'm not gonna call his name but he was in the back talking and he was unburdening himself and he said you know he was going through something at home and he said uh, that uh, he turned off all the lights in his house and sat in the dark and cussed the devil out about as hard as he <laughs> I was like, that's a novel approach to spiritual warfare. <laughs> and I, I had to sit there with a straight face because he was actually telling me, he wasn't laughing, he was and I cut, turned off the light, and, 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 and he was a white preacher. You know, they do that kind of stuff. <laughs> he was like, I, could, I called him every foul, nasty name, and cussed him about as bad as I could cuss. I said, hey, man. You had to let it out, I guess. He cussed out the devil. Now, I'm not about to say how many of y'all done cussed out the devil before because there'd be some hands going up that don't need to go up, say amen. <laughs> Jesus answered the devil back with the word. Amen. And that's the proper way to engage in spiritual warfare, amen. Then we see his victory in the wilderness. And we see the Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit. And we see the beginning of his ministry in Matthew chapter 8. We are able to see Jesus' works of power, the numerous uh, miracles that he performed, the wonders that he engaged in. In Matthew chapter 9, that we see opposition beginning to grow against him. And then we arrive right here in our text today, our foundational text in Matthew chapter 10. In. And we see Jesus choosing his men right there. Amen. Because if a leader is to embark upon any great endeavor, any great undertaking, the very first thing that leader needs to do is to choose their staff. Say amen to me. Jesus here is choosing his staff. The Bible says in another verse, how he looked out over all of the crowd and he chose those guys out of the crowd. He looked and, you know, Jesus said, I don't do anything unless the Father instructs me to do it. Amen. So the insinuation is Jesus looked out over the crowd and the, the Father was whispering in his ear, that one and this one and, and, and that one and, and, and this one. Amen. Uh, uh, that's how it is. You know, he will, he, he will look out over and call out who he wants to be called. Amen. It's almost like when he raised Lazarus from the dead and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And I know it was more than the one Lazarus down there. <laughs> and them other Lazaruses heard it too. And everybody, all the Lazaruses was wanting to get up. No, no, not you, not you, not you. Not you, not you. Mm -mm, Lazarus Jones, no. Nope. Lazarus Smith, uh-uh. Lazarus Harris, no. Nope. Lazarus Franklin, no. Nope. Lazarus Reynolds, no. Nope. Come on, you. You come out. Say amen. He knows who he's choosing, and he chooses who he knows, amen, because once again, he's choosing his staff, he's choosing his board, his associates right here on earth who will continue his work when he had left this earth plane. And it's significant to note, saints of God, that when he called them unto him in the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew, the Holy Ghost saw fit to designate them as disciples, disciples, which means a student, amen, one who was taught by another, amen. It means a follower. A disciple means a pupil, amen. It's a word also utilized in the book of Acts as a synonym for believers. Every believer is a disciple. You all are disciples. I'm a disciple. We're a disciple, a student, a follower of the Lord, amen. However, after he bestowed upon them power and commissioned them from service, the Holy Ghost in the second verse of Matthew chapter 10 calls them apostles, Amen. You have to understand that the call to discipleship and the call to apostleship are two very distinct callings. They should not be confounded one with another because they are not one and the same. Once again, the disciple is a pupil while an apostle is a messenger. Amen. The word apostle means one sent forth, amen, as an ambassador who bears a message and represents the one that sent them, amen. That's what it means, one sent forth. It doesn't mean one who is grand. 
<laughs> doesn't mean one who is untouchable and one who is auspicious. Uh, you know, it isn't one where you say, hey, hey, pastor, oh, it's apostle. <laughs> call me pastor. You call me apostle. <laughs> Amen. I remember uh, one guy was uh, trying to establish his apostleship to me. I wasn't den denouncing it, but, uh, you know, he was telling me how, you know, he was claiming apostolic succession, you know, because that's what Catholicism does, claim apostolic succession all the way back to the apostle. They say Peter, even though there's no evidence that Peter was ever in Rome, but they claim apostolic succession back to Peter. And I said, man, I'm sorry, man. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to, you know, say nothing, but man, uh, you know, you in the stove front in East Cleveland. A black dude. How are you tracing yourself all the way back to the apostle Peter? Like the person that laid hands on him, got hands laid on him, 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 all the way back to Peter laying hands on, but uh, we, ain't gonna, we ain't gonna go there. <laughs> to each is reaching, if I don't cop it, ain't mine to have. That's what you want to do, and that's what you want to say. I'm to the point now, you know, you get older in the Lord, and you don't care no more. Stuff you used to argue about 25 years ago and try to earnestly contend and stuff about now. I mean, hey, man, go ahead. I don't care. Fine. You want to call yourself an apostle and say, Peter, lay your hands on you. Go ahead with your bad self. Who am I to say he didn't? <laughs> But an apostle, even after being sent forth, an apostle still remains a disciple because it doesn't matter how long one has been with the Lord, how much one has done for the Lord or is doing for the Lord or how much the Lord has done through them, you never leave. Help me, Holy Ghost. You never graduate from the school of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You never get to where there's nothing more you can learn of God and nothing more you can learn from God. Talk to me, somebody. Now, Luke in his gospel, amen, the sixth chapter states that Jesus had continued all night in prayer to God concerning those whom he would choose. Can I, I'm, I'm laying the foundation, we'll be all right. And biblical chronology, when you harmonize the scriptures, amen, biblical chronology places Jesus' prayer immediately prior to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, demonstrating that the call of God on one's life is not a matter of personal choice, amen, on the part of the individual. You don't look at what somebody else else is doing covet it and call yourself amen you can you can choose a profession but you can't choose a calling you can select amen a profession or a vocation but you can't select a calling a call originates in heaven help me holy ghost and it comes directly from the throne of god Consequently, the Lord calls today, even as he called back then. Talk to me and I'll talk better, I promise. And once again, the call of God on an individual's life is not a personal choice. Amen. It's the choice of the Lord. It's the choice of God. It's the choice of the Holy Ghost. And it's a heavenly call, a heavenly choice. Now, there are certain facts that stand out and are noteworthy about these 12 men that were called. The first fact being that they were very ordinary men. They were ordinary guys, ordinary Joes. Amen. They had no wealth. They had no social position. They had no no uh, esteemed or distinguished academic backgrounds. They were chosen from the common people, amen. They were men who did ordinary things that had no special education. They had no social advantages because how many of you know, saints of God, that Jesus does not look for extraordinary people, amen. Now, he looks for ordinary people that can do ordinary things in an extraordinary way, amen. Now, he did not choose these men, amen, only for what they were. He chose them for what they were capable of becoming under his influence and in his power. Notice now that the same power was bestowed upon 70 other disciples in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke. And they returned to the Lord, amen, feeling good about themselves. They're declaring how devils were subject to them in the name of Jesus. And Jesus replied to them by saying, well, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Amen. Recounting Satan's expulsion from heaven, following his rebellion, referencing his future permanent exclusion from access to heaven and warning them, warning them in that statement against being lifted up in pride because 
pride is the foundation sin of the universe. Pride is what caused Satan's fall. They coming back boasting, oh man, the devil's subject to us in your name. Uh, Y'all watch out now. I saw Satan. Satan got lifted up just like that and I saw him fall. So be careful. Amen. About when the Lord is using you, how you uh, try to take credit on your own and think it makes you special. It makes you grand. Amen. Now, the 12 disciples went forth in power under the command of the Lord, doing what he told them they were able to do. And they were initially victorious. They enjoyed, amen, initial success. And their success and their victories, the Bible says, cause them to be filled with joy. Because anytime you're doing something for the Lord under the auspices and the power of the Lord, you will be filled with a joy unspeakable. Amen. They were filled with joy as they testified about what the Lord did to them and what the Lord did through them and what they were, what they were able to do uh, under the Lord's and, uh, uh, agency until they found themselves, saints of God, in a situation. They found themselves in a situation where they failed at something that they had previously been successful at. Y'all help me. They found themselves defeated in an area where they had previously been victorious. I'm going to come over to your house after a while. One single, solitary, devil-ridden, demon-possessed boy brings all of their power and all of their ability and all of their resources to nothing, destroying all of their self-confidence in the process and causing them to digress into a state of uncertainty and into a state of confusion. One problem, help me, Holy Ghost, one problem, one obstacle rendered them ineffective and had them wondering what happened to their supernatural power, wondering if the Lord had repossessed what he had given them. Amen. They're faced with a problem that they were incapable of solving, faced with a question that they had no answer for. This boy stands before them. Help me, Holy Ghost. Bound by the devil, bound by the enemy, under the control of the adversary, and they were unable to set him free. He represented a problem that they had no solution for. His father had brought him to them, amen, an optimistic expectation. And however, the father's optimism and the father's expectation slowly evaporate until the father arrived at the conclusion that the disciples could not cure him. There was nothing that they could do. Now, if you read the narrative, saints of God, in Mark's gospel, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 28, you'll discover that Mark goes more into detail about it, probably because Matthew was one of the disciples that was there that got embarrassed, while Mark, amen, being a student, amen, of, of, of Paul, he wasn't an eyewitness, so he would go into more detail, you know. Matthew didn't want to go all into detail because he was one of the ones that failed, amen, and he was still somewhat embarrassed about it, but Mark had no problem problem telling it all, you know, because somebody else will always put in the details that you left out. Especially when you're talking about you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And so when you read Mark's account, he, he talks about how they were being mocked by the scribes and the Pharisees. They were standing around. You can almost see the scorn in the eyes of the scribes when they were interrogating the disciples. You can almost, amen, you can, you, it, that helped produce, amen, the uh, failure they experienced. They were surrounded by critics and surrounded by spectators that did not want them to succeed in the first place. You can almost hear their taunts when you read Mark's account and hear their jeers and their mockery putting pressure upon the disciples to perform saints of God in the midst of a hostile environment of unbelief. The disciples stand in the middle of the crowd. The multitude is there on the outer, in the outer circle. The inner ring was all the scribes and the Pharisees and the detractors and the haters and then the boy is standing there all crazy and messed up and the father is standing there shaking his head and the disciples are right there baffled and defeated. They're ridiculed and embarrassed. They're confused and ashamed because how many of you know that there is nothing worse than public failure? There's nothing worse than public shame. 
amen, public embarrassment. There's nothing worse, saints of God, than public ridicule. How many of you know it's bad enough failing in private? It's bad enough being defeated in secret, but to be put to an open shame is not an enviable, situa enviable situation. Talk to me, somebody, especially when you know that you're surrounded by people who do not want you to succeed in the first place. We're going to get there, I promise. People that do not want you victorious in the first place. Amen. Uh, you, 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 you have these, these people here. The disciples are surrounded uh, by, by their detractors. And, and listen, how they knew that the disciples were there, we're not told. All we know is that oftentimes your detractors know more about what you're doing than you think they do. Amen. And the implication is that the scribes did not show up. The antagonists did not show up until the disciples were in the midst of their failure. You don't see the scribes when the devils were being cast out in Jesus' name. You didn't hear the scribes commenting when the 70s said, we're casting out devils left and right because how many of you know that people, uh, uh, let's say your critics and your fault finders, those that are just plain flat out jealous of you, uh, they know how to keep quiet when you're enjoying success. They know how to remain silent when you're walking in victory, amen. They keep a low profile when you're up on top. Uh, but they come out of their holes. They crawl out of their dens when they hear of your failures. They surface when they find out about your struggle, asking questions and demanding answers as to why you failed or why you were unsuccessful in doing what the Lord empowered you to do. The disciples are right there. Targets. Targets. They're targets of scrutiny. Targets of questions. Targets of mockery. Targets of derision. And a number of you, of truth be told, have been there as well. Talk to me if I'm talking to you. Uh, having to face people and having to answer questions about your inability to be successful uh, in whatever it was you were endeavoring to accomplish. Talk back to me. I'll uh, make it plain. Uh, how many of you know that people, for some sick, deranged, psychological reason, uh, love to ask you questions uh, about what they see as your failure in order to satisfy their, amen, uh, uh, their, 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 their morbid curiosity. They love to do that. They love to come up asking you some questions when they think you failed. Well, what happened to your business? I, th I thought you went into business. You, you still doing that? I was walking my dog. Dude who pulled up on me. Oh, dude. Hey, Reverend Scott, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm going to be honest. I'm not that engaged in a certain type of strength. You still got your church? Why wouldn't I have it? Who going to win the next election? I don't know. You all up on me asking me this dumb crap? Then when I act like I'm capable of acting. Since ain't none of my members around. Since you ain't got no camera on. I can cut a fool and deny it later. Or just don't care who you tell, because whoever you tell ain't in my circle. Folk love to ask you questions about what they perceive to be your failure. So I thought you said God gave you that business. You ain't doing that no more? Oh, y'all got divorced, huh? Mm-mm-mm. I thought, and y'all look like just such a blessed couple. What the heck is a blessed couple? Yeah, yeah I was blessed. He was a demon. <laughs> y'all got divorced. Yeah, yeah, the devil in him. Oh. Then they go looking for him on social media. 
to get his take. You know what he's going to say. She crazy. <laughs> Every time a guy cut up in a relationship, he says, because she crazy. No, you made her go crazy on you. Because she went crazy don't mean she is crazy. She just went crazy on you. I was telling the saints in the back, I still haven't got the victory over being a habitual line crosser. Any man know about that, what I'm talking about? A habitual line crosser. You think after 40 some years, I've been unlearned to stop crossing certain lines. And then when they get quiet, you either get nervous and shut up or it emboldens you. Till you start hearing this. You hear that drawer rattling. Once that drawer start rattling, I'm going to go on in here and chill. <laughs> Once that drawer start rattling, when that drawer start rattling, that butcher knife drawer start rattling, <laughs> we're going to leave that there, all right? They always do that. People always want to question you about what they perceive to be your failure. And how many of you know that it's enough having to deal with your failure internally? It's enough having to try to strategize and labor and formulate and maintain and succeed on your own. It's enough facing the situation and the problem that caused you to fail in the first place. It's enough asking yourself questions that you don't have the answers to. It's enough second guessing yourself, second guessing your decisions, second guessing your choices, second guessing your behavior, looking for reasons inside of you for your lack of success while also fighting against feelings of frustration and feelings of depression and feelings of despair and despondency that arise out of your failure to achieve your goal. It's enough dealing with your own personal internal drama. But to be questioned and interrogated and picked apart, to be mocked and antagonized and criticized and derided by spectators and critics that are intrusive and curious and meddlesome and prying and just flat out nosy and those that have been wanting you to fail and waiting for you to fail. How many of you know that's almost unbearable? And you find yourself like those disciples were down in the valley of failure. Anybody ever been down in that valley of failure before? faced with failure in the midst of a crowd, embarrassed and ashamed, distressed and distraught, crestfallen and humiliated. Somebody help me right there. And here they are, the disciples, that's where they are. The valley, valley of failure, all eyes on them. Fail. Here they are. Whew, I've been there, done that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They're down in that valley of ridicule and regret, down in that valley of disgrace, that valley of dishonor, unable to come to grips with the reason for your condition. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, and they're like we've been sometimes just hoping that Jesus would show up. <laughs> and I'm there looking around, waiting for Jesus to show up and correct the situation, wanting Jesus to just show up uh, and fix the problem, fix the failure, solve the issue, silence the critics, and disperse the crowd that's surrounding you in your defeat. And how many of you know that he does just that? Talk to me, somebody because they look up and here comes Jesus down that mountain because how many of you know that the Lord I know is old but is still good he will always show up for you when you need him the most because you've got to understand, saints, you don't need him the most when you've got it all together and everything's going smooth. You don't need him the most when you're successful and you're victorious, when you're healthy and you're happy. Oh, he'll show up then. He'll show up in response to your praise. He'll show up in response to your thanksgiving. And there's nothing better than enjoying the presence of the Lord and being prosperous and successful. There's nothing better than enjoying God. God's presence and being victorious and being happy and doing good when everything 
everything's fine, but I'm so glad that God does not restrict his activity in your life only to the good times. Talk back to me. I'm so glad that when you need him the most, he will show up in your failure. He'll show up in your defeat. He'll show up in your mess. He'll show up in your sick bed. He'll show up in your tragedy. He'll show up in your disaster. He'll show up in your confusion and make you aware where there seems to be no way at all. He'll perform a miracle on your behalf and bring you out of your bad situation with a strong and mighty hand. Somebody say, help him, Holy Ghost. Look at that person next to you and tell him. Those of you at home, say it to yourself. I'm so glad he will show up when my enemies and my foes come to eat of my flesh. When a host is encamped against me, he'll show up and close my enemy's mouth. He'll show up with my breakthrough. Show up with my deliverance. Show up with my turnaround. He will show up with my miracles. Somebody shout, show up, Lord. Show up. Show up there. Show on up. And when you show up, Lord, show out. Show up and show out. Show out like you want to show out. Show up in my distress. Show up in my pain. Show up in my struggle. Show up in this sickness. Show up in my situation. And bring closure to the issues that cause me to be distressed. Let my enemies know. Let my critics know. Let the gossips, let the judges, let them know that despite my failure and my defeat, despite my shame and situation, God's still on my side. Look at somebody and say, I don't care how bad I messed up. He's still on my side. He still called me. He still anointed me. He's still using me. He still sent me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I keep going? Their failure didn't negate their call. Their failure didn't negate their assignment from God. Both Matthew and Mark in their gospels, when you read this narrative, they ain't going to emphasize the fact that even though Jesus showed up and came through and performed a miracle, saints that rectified the situation, he brought them out, he fixed everything, he straightened it out, that when the disciples got alone with Jesus, and I'm almost where I'm trying to go, they asked him, in private, like so many of us have and do. They asked him how their humiliating defeat came about. How they wound up such miserable failures. They asked him in private why they had not been able to cast that devil out of that boy. Even though Jesus had publicly exonerated them, they still had some private questions. They still wondered, well, how did we fail in the first place? How did I fail? Why did, why did this happen after I had been anointed by God? Lord, you called us. You anointed us. You sent us out. How did we fail? Why did we fail? What did we, how did we wind up like this? How did we wind up all messed up in front of everybody? Anybody here ever asked the Lord that question? Lord, I know you called me. I know you chose me. I know you anointed me. I know you sent me. Why did my business fail? Why did my marriage fail? Why am I a failure financially? Lord, I know you called me. I know you chose me. I know you anointed me. I know you appointed me. I know you sent me. I know your hand is on me. Why did I fail sexually? 
why did my integrity fail? Lord, why did my health fail? Why am I sick in my body? I thought you gave me power over the enemy. I thought you equipped me for the battles that I would face. I thought I could do what you empowered me to do in the past and get myself a present victory. Why is the, what is the reason for my failure? Why did your power fail me? Why would I need it this time? And Jesus gave them an answer that they didn't expect. Because the last place that people look for the explanation of their failure is inside. The last place people look for the reason why they fail is inside, is within. They'll look for an answer in heaven They'll look for a reason in hell. They'll attribute it to the will of God or they'll just blame it on the devil. They'll say it's other people's fault. It's because of this situation. It's because of that circumstance. It's because I went over here. It's because this happened right here. Is it because I was up on the roof and Bathsheba happened to be taking a bath? It's because I was doing this and because I was doing that because of their upbringing when my mama did this and my daddy did that and I was raised over here. But they rarely say it's me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer. I acknowledge my transgression. It's my fault and my fault alone. They ask Jesus, why? I'm not there yet, but I'm almost. Why, Lord? Why couldn't we cast him out? Why did we fail? Why were we embarrassed? Why did we suffer defeat? And Jesus' reply suggested that the cause of their failure was completely in themselves there was no defeat no withdrawal of his power there was no uh, 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 repossession of his anointing the defect was not in the power the defect was in those who held the power the Lord told them that the reason why they failed it was because they had not been sure that they would be able to succeed in the first place. Jesus said, the problem is not in my power. He said, the problem is not with me. The problem is with you. Look at that person next to you and tell them, say, the problem is you. The problem is with you. It's not with God. The problem is with you. The real problem is inside, is with you because you you were not convinced that you could succeed. You did not believe that you could overcome. You did not believe that you could be victorious. You let the voice of the crowd and the hostility of your enemies undermine the faith that you possessed inside. You became so preoccupied with what other people said and what other people thought about you. What people said you could do and what people said you could could not do what people said you could achieve and what people said you could not achieve that it affected the way that you thought about yourself talk to me Jesus said it's because of you the problem is with in. The problem is with you. It's because of your unbelief that you find yourself defeated in a battle that you used to win. Talk back to me. I'll talk better. I promise. He said you found yourself battling things that you overcame in the past. Mm. And the reason why you found yourself battling things, succumbing to things, being defeated by things that you overcame in the past was because you stopped believing in yourself. Y'all talk to me and let me, help me preach up here. You never stop believing that God could do it. The disciples knew that if Jesus showed up, he could do it. You never stop believing that God could do it. 
and that's because you more than anybody else are aware of the weakness of this earthen vessel that carries the, the, the treasure of the Lord's power within it you know you're secretly insecure you know that you're overwhelmed you know that you don't trust in yourself you know that you're conscious of your personal liabilities and you've allowed the way that you think about yourself to dictate and determine the way you think about God so you say yes yes God can do it but I just don't believe he can do it through me yes God can prosper I just don't believe that God can prosper me yes God can bless I just don't think he'll bless me yes God can heal I just don't know if he'll heal me yes God can deliver but will he deliver me yes God can send a husband but will he send me one yes God can provide a wife but I don't know if he'll provide one for me yes he can fix broken marriages but will he do it for me but look at that person next to you and tell him say you've got to change the way that you think about yourself oh come on help me Jesus was saying to the disciples then and he's saying the same thing to you now that he put the potential to be successful down on the inside of you he put the potential to be exceptional down on the inside he put the potential to be victorious he put the potential to be outstanding down on the inside of you and you could and you can accomplish anything and everything you desire to accomplish if you believe in you shout about it you got to believe in you and believe in God believe in God and believe in yourself Jesus said he put everything inside of you uh, to reach your goals, uh, everything inside of you uh, to achieve your vision, uh, everything inside of you uh, to obtain your ambitions. Uh, he put everything inside of you. You already got it. Uh, talk somebody and tell them you already got it. Uh, you got everything you need. Uh, you got everything it takes uh, to be successful, uh, to overcome, uh, to fulfill your desires, uh, but you've allowed the the noise you've allowed the noise of other folks other people's opinions other people's perceptions other people's doings other people's dealings you've allowed that to dictate and determine your pursuit of your purpose and the success and the failure of your endeavors you allowed the thoughts and the opinions and the words you've allowed the posts and the tweets and the activity and the thoughts of other people to cause you to doubt the abilities that God put on the inside of you somebody say that devil is a liar some of you have suffered from low self-esteem for much too long you've lacked confidence for much too long looking at your perceived inabilities rather than focusing on the ability that God has placed on the inside of you. You've been, you've been your own worst enemy. You've been your own biggest critic because you've allowed what other people said about you to affect the way you think about yourself. You've allowed other people's negativity to create a negative self-image in you. The devil is a liar. They said, that you were too this or they said that you were too that or they said that you were not enough this or they said that you were not enough that doing the best they can to humiliate you body shaming you you're too fat you're too skinny you're too black you're too light your hair too nappy you ain't got enough hair they've allowed you grew up in the pride you ain't got no money you ain't doing what i'm doing you've allowed other people to put their negative self images on you ridiculing your appearance diminishing your intelligence questioning your abilities downrating your motivations to the extent that you are unable to achieve that 
which God has empowered you to achieve. Look at somebody and say the devil is a liar. Now shout no more devil, no more, no more, no more, no more. Jesus said, you believe in me. He said, because of your unbelief, but the unbelief ain't in me. He said, you believe in me. You have faith in me, but you don't believe in yourself. You don't have faith in yourself. You've allowed your lack of faith in yourself to paralyze your progress, to stifle your success, to diminish your dreams, and to stop you in your tracks. Self-doubt is your biggest problem. Look at somebody and say, I know that's right. Self-doubt is your biggest problem. Self-doubt is your greatest enemy. That's the Goliath. But Jesus said, you can do everything that I've gifted you to be able to do everything that I've empowered you, everything that I've equipped you to do, you can do it. Let other people tell you something about you that's been affecting you for the rest of your life. The devil is a liar. He said, you can do everything that I put in you to do. And I put in you to do anything you want to do. The Bible says God has placed eternity in the heart of man. You've got limitless potential. You've got infinity. You've got infinite possibilities available to you because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And you need to tell yourself that I'm going to stop looking at God from the standpoint of my weakness and I'm going to start looking at myself from the standpoint of God's strength. And I'm going to tell myself from this day on that I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength, that gives me the power, that gives me the anointing, that gives me the creativity, that gives me the ingenuity, that gives me the ability. Help me Holy Ghost to do the impossible and I'm going to stop failing and stop falling in the same area over and over and over again and I'm going to tell myself that I'm more than a conqueror I'm going to believe that by his stripes I'm healed I'm going to tell myself that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper and I'm going to stop letting the devil use me like he used me and I'm going to stop going to God telling him how big my mountains are and I'm going to start going to my mountains and telling them how big my God is and I'm going to give thanks unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Look at that person next to you and tell them, say the problem is within. The problem is you. The problem is with you. Look at somebody and say it. Say the problem, oh, it's me, it's me, it's me. I'm the problem, I'm the problem. But I'm not going to be a problem anymore. Look at somebody and say, I won't be a problem anymore. Because from this day on, as far as I'm concerned, I am what God says I am. I can have what God said I can have. I can do what God said I can do. Look at somebody next to you and make a declaration. Say, victory is mine. Success is mine. I am an overcomer. I shall not be defeated. And from this day on, I'm going to see myself like God sees me. And I'm going to say of myself what God says of me. Tell yourself, I am good enough. I am smart enough. I am capable enough. I am genius enough. And I'm going to think of myself what God thinks of me. God said it. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God's thoughts are to give me. I didn't know you was up there. God's thoughts are to give me an expected end. An ex somebody say an expected end. Come on, say it like you mean it, an expected end. And I'm going to let God's thoughts, I'm going to let this mind 
be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm going to let the mind of God, I'm going to let the thought of God be in me, be in my mind, be in my spirit, be in my soul, because his mind, his thoughts will give me an expected end. How many of you know an end is a completion? It's a fulfillment. His thoughts will give me an expected end. It will, his thoughts will give me the end of my expectations. Mm. His thoughts will give me the fulfillment of my expectations. Uh, somebody say, I expect to get blessed. Say it. Uh, say, I expect to get prosperous. Say it. Uh, say, I expect to get married. Say it. Say it. I expect to have children. Say it, saints. Uh, I expect to raise. Uh, I expect to be a homeowner. Uh, I expect to be a promotion. Uh, I expect to break through. Uh, I expect a miracle. And God is going to fulfill uh, all of my expectations expectations for us because from this day on not only will I keep on believing in him from this day on I'm going to keep on believing in myself no matter what anybody else says no matter what anybody else thinks no matter how anybody else feels no matter what anybody else posts Nobody when anybody else tweets, no matter when anybody else puts on all that other stuff, TikTok and then no matter what anybody else thinks or feels, from this day on, I'm gonna keep believing in myself. Tell yourself, say it, say it out loud, say I am going to make it. Say it, say I am going to have faith in God and I going to have faith in myself. I'm going to speak to those mountains and those problems and issues in my life. I'm going to speak to my circumstance. And I'm going to speak to everything that's interfering with my progress. Everything that's, 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 that's hindering my advancement. That's blocking me from doing what God wants me to do. And what God wants me to be, and what God wants me to have, and that's also blocking me from doing what I want to do, and what I want to be, and what I want to have. I'm not going to live up to anybody else's expectations for me anymore. I'm going to live up to the ones that God has placed on the inside of me for myself. And I'm going to decree and declare some things in my life because the Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Lack, get out of my life. Sickness, I dismiss you. Fear, you got to go. Worry, loneliness, despair, frustration, failure, defeat, demons, devils, difficulties. I command you in the name of Jesus. To go from my thoughts, my feelings, my heart, my mind, go from my life. Now look at that person next to you and tell them, say the problem is solved. So you found out what it was. Ah, oh, look at him and say now, say it, say now, nothing is impossible. Look at somebody and tell them, say, the sky is the limit to what you can have. Tell somebody, we're going higher than we've ever gone before. Nobody can stop you now. People can say what they want to say. People can do what they want to do. People can think what they want to think, but nobody can stop you now. The disciples fail at doing what God called and anointed them to do, even as we all have failed. And I, I make it personal, me and our calling at one or more times in our life. And we look for reasons, external explanations for our failure. We try to place the blame outside of ourselves. But Jesus said, the problem is within. The problem is with you. You failed on the inside first. And your inner failure 
manifested externally. He said, have faith in a, as a grain of mustard seed. And he said that. The reason why, because the Bible says the mustard seed was known for its small size. But it grew. That little tiny seed grew into a very large bush. In other words, he said that mustard seed had a great deal of potential inside of it for growth and for productivity. He said you failed because of your unbelief. You didn't believe what you could do. You believed what I could do. You just didn't believe what you could do. In and through me. But then he said, how be it this kind? What kind? Well, he wasn't talking about no different kind of demon. Like some demons, you got to do this or something. He said, this kind, this kind of what? This kind of unbelief. He wasn't talking about the devil. He wasn't saying that kind of devil. He wasn't even talking about demons in that statement. He was talking about unbelief. They said, why couldn't we do it? He said, because of your unbelief. How be it this kind, this unbelief, this kind of unbelief only goes out by fasting and prayer. In other words, he was saying, you know what he was saying in a nutshell? He said, you want to know why you failed? Why you couldn't cast them out? Because you weren't walking close enough with God. Y'all don't want to help me right there. You got away from God. You didn't maintain the contact that you had with him that you once did. When you first got the power, you were so humble and, 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 and just so unable to fathom why God could choose a wretch like you. When you first got the title, when you first got the position, when you first got the office, when you first got the duty, when you first got the responsibility, you just were so, so, so humble. Then pretty soon the humility wore off. And you didn't maintain the contact necessary. He said, for you to be able to roll like you want to roll and keep doing like that, you got to stay in touch with God. Jesus said, you see me going up on mountains praying, don't you? You see me getting alone by myself and getting alone with God. What made you think you didn't have to get alone with God anymore? That's what happened. You got away from God, and it made you lose confidence in yourself because you knew that you had strayed somewhat away from him. So he said, you know what? Get closer to God. And you will not have a problem with failure ever again. He said, restore and maintain your closeness with God. He will empower you and enable you to be successful in anything and everything that you set out to achieve because he will order your steps every step of the way. We don't read of the disciples failing ever again. We don't read later on, well, they tried it again and it still didn't work. And they went out there again and got put to an open shame. We don't see them failing in the area of the exercise of the power and the anointing of God. And we saw them getting scared and running away. And his face with death. But they didn't fail in those other areas ever again because they learned how to stay in touch with God. Come on, stand up on your feet, clap your hands, open up your mouth, and give him a praise. Come on, stand up on your feet, clap your hands, open up your mouth, give God praise. Give him praise. Praise. Lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Open up your mouth and magnify the Lord. Exalt his holy name. Come on, he said, praise the Lord. Don't stop. Come on, he said, praise the Lord. Don't stop. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, keep on praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, lift up your hands and praise him. Come on, lift up your hands and magnify him. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. I don't have any monitor. I don't know if we could just set it 
and leave it like you have it on Tuesday is perfect. Come on. Come on, bless the Lord. That's, per that's perfect. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and give him the glory. Come on and submit yourself to him. Somebody say, I'm submitting myself to God. I'm submitting myself to the Lord. Can you hear me? Come on, somebody say, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. If you submit yourself to God, he will give you the desire. Somebody say the desire of your heart. Everybody say it. If you submit yourself to God, when you submit yourself to God, he will give you the desire of your heart. Come on, I just, I, I, I just want to put something with the word that you heard on today. Stay where you are. Nobody moving. Nobody sitting. Everybody standing because we're acknowledging the Lord and his presence. When a king come in the room, when a judge come in the room, they say, all rise. When you're in court, you're not looking around and saying, well, they want me to stand up. You stand up because you don't want to get in contempt of court. I want to give you a word that God gave me. He gave me a word that says progress. Everybody say progress. Progress. Progress in the natural is forward, onward movement towards your destination. Progress when we are in the spirit is a funny thing. Progress, you see progress when you build your house, like when you do a room addition. You say, oh good, I'm seeing, Elder Freddie will say we're seeing progress because you can see the visible wallpaper, the carpeting, you can see the colors, you can see the, the supplies coming to pass. But, 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 but as we progress in God, God hides your destination because the destination is too big for you. It's too, your vision is too big for you to comprehend on one level. If God showed you all that you are and showed you the opposition that was coming after you because of all that you are, you would turn around and run. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. If a job when it hires you and it says this is a good paying job, it, your benefits are great, but they don't show you all that you're going to be doing because you would turn around. You'd be like, I don't know, that's a bigger responsibility. But when God, God, God is moving us in progress. And because God is dimensional, hear me now, listen to me and grab what you need to get out of this. Because God is dimensional. God is past, present, and future. God is eternity. God is forever. God is all existing. God is not limited to one space or one person's worship or one person's cry or one person's prayer. God is not a, he is not limited in any of that. He is a progressing. He progresses. The progress. So when pastor said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to stop looking at yourself where you were and what you've done and what you didn't do and what you don't have because that's not progress. Okay, okay. When you go to lose weight, they say, what's your goal? And then you give them some outlandish goal. And they say, okay, how soon do you want to get there? They said, within six months. Well, then you're going to have to stop doing this, you're going to have to stop doing this, and you're going to have to add this, and you're going to have to add this, and you're going to have to work out this, and you're going to have to do, be, you're going to have to be determined. And you say, well, I don't want that much. <laughs> progress, too much is given, much is required. But the progress that you're making, you're making not just for yourself. Look at somebody and say, my progress is not just about me. It's about my children. It's about my family. It's about my church. It's about my calling. It's about my destiny. It's about what I'm supposed to be doing versus what I think I can't do. So when God says, I'm sending you forth and I'm calling you to do a great work that you cannot see, that you don't comprehend, God is basing the progress not on you, on him. 
He said, because I've already spoken and all you got to do is step in it and believe it. That's what the pastor said. That's what Pastor Dale said. Once you believe it, Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do these things? Once you believe that you can do it through Christ, God says all things are possible to him that believe. He says that. He said, to the sick, say you're healed. To the weak, say you're strong. To the poor, because what? What he did, not what you're doing. So right now, I'm making progress. Say it, I'm making progress. Say it like you're bold. Say it like, I'm making progress. I'm making progress in my life. I'm making progress in my dreams. I'm making progress in my marriage. I'm making progress with my kids. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Y'all act like y'all ain't got nothing y'all can think of. Y'all making progress. My business is making progress. Because I'm not putting the trust in me. Yes, I got to do the work. Yes, I got to bring the ingenuity. Yes, I got to bring the vision. Yes, I got to bring some, some strength. But I know that I know that I know that he who begun a good work. Somebody say a good work. Online say a good work. You see your goal? Do you see your goal? You see it? Now, but run it with patience. Because there are going to be days when you don't feel that powerful, that anointed, that blessed. And there are going to be times in your bank account, don't say everything that you've been confessing. But somebody say, I'm making progress. Now, I dare you right now in the name of the Lord to just decree and declare, I'm making progress in the name of the Lord. And I don't care what the opposition is. I don't care what the challenge is. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I am making progress. And my health is spring forth and speedily. My finances is coming together. My life is coming together. I don't have the perfect person in my life, but they on the way. Okay, don't do it then and watch you get. Somebody say, it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Come on. It's on the way. So every time I do what I think I cannot do, what does that mean, Pastor? How am I able to tithe when I still got my own bills? Because I can do all things through Christ. And what God is asking me to do is part of my progress. Giving is part of my progress. That's why y'all are so faithful. That's why y'all don't let whatever come against your other parts of your life. I, I, I'm sure you got stuff going on that you could use that money for last week. But I'm making progress. And I'm not allowing the enemy, somebody I'm talking to online, you better get away from those people that don't think you're nobody. Get away from those people that, don't, that are not invested in you. Somebody say, you got to invest in me now. Say it. You got to invest in me. I ain't talking about give me your money. I'm talking about you got to believe that what I am confessing, I am well able to perform it. Come on. You're getting ready to walk into your new home. You're getting ready to walk into your new season. You say, I heard that before. No, but you ain't never walked in it before. Some other prophet will come and tell you, you're getting ready to enter into your new season and you'll sit there and wait on it. But when a senior prophet, a major prophet comes and say, it's closer than you think. You can get ready. You can start packing because you are on the way. You're on the way to receiving it. It is right there because God gives the vision following this man of God, following this woman of God, and they told me I was going to be all right. The doctor told me I was going to be sick. Yeah, but 15 years, you're still here, and you're still walking in the word that God gave somebody that's closer. Somebody talk back to me, please. You're doing better than you thought because you made it to this year, and you're going to make it to another year, and you're going to make it to another year. And you're going to make another year till you're sitting on the porch old with a beard gray. And you're going to say, I remember when the doctor said I wasn't going to make it. But look at me now because I trusted in the living God. Come on. Doctors say all they see is cancer. Tell them that's all you can see. But God said, I am healed. Come on. They'll say, I ain't, you ain't getting married. The years will start piling up. 
You say, but honey, Ruth got married and she wasn't that young. She wasn't that young. I don't know what y'all think. She was not that young. And she had been married before. Somebody say, bless God for your new season. Y'all don't know how to celebrate with your brothers and sisters? They looking at me like, well, who's she talking about? Don't you worry about it. You'll see it. I, I, you'll see it. I post it. I post it. I post it. Destination wedding. I might not do it at the church, but I will get married by a man or woman of God. But I ain't gonna, don't get mad at me because I don't want, I don't want to do it your way. I'm gonna do it my way. God said it. I don't want to feed a bunch of people that don't like me. Just me and my boo go and get out. We going down there. After that, that's it. It's on the side. It's on the door. Do not disturb. This is the season when you do it unconventionally. I hear the Lord saying it's coming, but it's coming unconventionally. Oh, y'all don't see y'all. Y'all better stop waiting late to catch this over here. They be catching it. Y'all need to switch seats next week. Y'all need to say, it's something on this seat that won't let me receive stuff. And you need to say, excuse me. I tell you this, as fast as these seasons, these, it's the end of September already. I just put my spring, I put my summer furniture out. Didn't sit on it but two times, elders. Now it's time to put it back up. Somebody say, time is not waiting on me. Online, I want you to get up out of your seat. You got the nerve to be tired and you done laid up on the couch. Kick back in the good chair. Not the bad chair, the good chair. You ain't have to get up, praise with the saints, walk two times, touch somebody, say amen. Y'all been comfortable all morning. You done went to the refrigerator four times. What's his name, Pastor? Y'all got your pajamas on. Y'all need to say amen because you know that's what they're doing. Flicking between here and church, here and your stories, or here and your movie. But this one thing you got to concentrate on was the word that was given and offering time. Put your hands together. Somebody say, because I'm making progress. I'm making progress. I'm not looking at what... I can't see and I'm not looking at what isn't changing. Somebody say, I'm making progress. New Spirit Revival Center, we are making progress. Tell five people. Hurry up, tell them. We're making progress. Say it. See, because we all got to be in agreement. We're making progress. I want those of you that are online, I want you to go to your computer, your phone, go to Givelify, PayPal, text to give. And I want you to sow the best seed that you can sow today. Somebody say today. God is raising up givers. Say God is raising up givers. God is raising up reapers. You're not just sowers, you're reapers. You're reapers. Elder Glenn, you and Leah are reapers. You're getting ready to go into your reaping season. You're moving into a season where it was seed, it was seed, was time, now it's harvest. It was 30, it was 60, now it's a hundredfold. You don't understand. Fall has to produce what winter, spring, and summer held before winter comes around again. No season can hold its last season. The trees can't hold leaves. Come on, talk back to me because y'all know something. Trees have to disperse their leaves. So it can be some new leaves coming. New buds got to come on. You can't get new money if you don't give faith money. They don't like this. They don't like it. God is an investing God. God didn't just give you a job just to pay bills. He gave you a job so that you would have seed to sow. Now he's getting ready to multiply the seed sown. Go check your Bible. I'm not lying to you. Am I right? It's time for you to stop holding on and fearing and walking by fear. It's time to you walk by faith. It's time for you to tithe. It's time for you to give to God. 
I want you online to get up from the couch, get up from there, and I want you to go to Givelify, and I want you to pay your tithes. I want you to do like one of our leaders did a couple weeks ago. They went and paid all their back tithe. She was able to do it. Some of you can, some of you can do that. Go do it. Hurry up because your, your basket is getting ready to be full, but you want new money. You want new opportunities. You want new, new, new business ventures. You want new connections. You want things to happen now. And I want you to go get up right now. Those of you that can, I'm talking to y'all. Y'all listening to me in the sanctuary. Start getting your seed together. Get your best seed together. Get your best seed together. Some of you will say, well, Pastor, how can you keep pressing us when, it's, when you know what we got to do? I'm not pressing everybody. I'm, I'm making a clarion call to people who can do what they can do. I'm not saying that to everybody. Don't get offended. Don't shut down. Stop letting your brokenness speak to your future. Stop letting your brokenness. You know what I'm, that's a banking, isn't it? Bankers don't, bankers don't look at what they don't got. They look at what's invested in the bank. They look at the depositories. They look at stuff like that. And they say, okay, it looks like it's a pretty good year. Coming up, we can lend this, we can do this. God said, I'm, I, I'm getting ready to give you things that you borrowed before. They're getting ready to be yours. I'm trying to help them. Deacon, I'm trying to help them. Stop walking by faith. Stop, stop, stop walking by fear and stop walking by faith. Stop moving in a, in a spirit of fear. Stop moving in a spirit of, oh God, what I'm going to eat. God ain't never look. You look like nice, healthy. The biggest industry in the world is the undergarment industry to pull people in. Why? Because we over the budget. We over the budget. We over our limit. Don't nobody want to lose weight. They just want to look like they lost weight. Suffocate me for an hour until I can be all right. You know how you know you got something on you can't breathe in because you hold on to everything you walk by. Just, just let me get to the seat. Oh. But God is getting ready to burst forth with new wine, new expectation, new possibilities. New dreams. Somebody say, I'm going into new stuff. New things are getting ready to happen. So I want you guys, those of you that are in this sanctuary, get your tithe ready. Get an extra seed. Somebody say, I'm in the season of giving extra. I can do it. It's my, it's my movie money. It's my, it's my extra popcorn money. Whatever it is. But I'm going to give my extra. My extra. Somebody say, my extra. My extra. Smile now. Because if you're not cheerful, you ain't going to get that overwhelming, overflowing, abundant harvest. Do what you know you can do. Pay your tithe, give your offering, and those of you that are able, give an extra $100. Somebody say, give an extra. Now, I ain't talking about y'all. Some of y'all ain't never done it, so I don't know how you bound up. Ain't never done it. Ain't thinking about doing it. But they bound up that you sitting there doing it. I know who you are, because you got that bound up look on your face. Pastor, that's the broke look. Then I don't want that look. Say it, I don't want that look. And I don't even want to share it with my friends. I don't want my friends broke. Who am I talking to in this church? You want a bunch of broke friends? You want a bunch of, you want to go and get meat that you got to chew, give it to the dog, let him chew it first, because it's so tough. Somebody say, I'm out of that season. Say it. I'm out of that season. Uh-uh. Dr. Darrell went to the store one time. He said, I saved us some money. I said, good, what you do? Did you not get all the cookies, cakes, and pies, and sweets that you normally buy? That'll save us $50 right there. Some of them don't even want to laugh because you bound up because you, you, you being asked to give a, a seed to, you, to bless your life. A little bit softer, Darren. Wait for me. So, you, so, so, so Dr. Darrell goes and buys some meat. That meat was so tough. Yogi didn't even want it. I said, where'd you get it? And I ain't going to say the store. He said, well, maybe we should have got that metal thing and beat it real hard. I said, listen, that was my mama's day. That ain't my day. 
Put some meat tenderizer. They don't even make that no more because it's tenderizing your stomach. Get it out of here. Don't go to the store and buy nothing that's cheap. But I got to save money. Save money. Save your stomach too. Get up right now and get ready for God to take you into your new season. I want a new spirit. Come on, new spirit. Y'all know who I'm talking to. Those of you that are ready to be promoted. Ready, ready. Somebody say ready. 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 If the blessing got to begin with me, then I'm going to open up my mouth. I'm going to start saying, you know I'm getting ready to get married, don't you? You know I'm getting ready to get blessed, don't you? Say it. You know I'm getting ready to get blessed, right? Say it. You know, you know, I'm, you know I'm getting ready to get blessed, right? See this, y'all, I'm going to have a prayer service over this side, not, your, not the first two people on this and the two people on the end, but something is happening because y'all don't like confessing stuff over here. Say, you know I'm getting ready to get blessed, right? Online, I want everybody so extra today. Say, you know I'm getting ready to get blessed, right? You know the book I was working on? You know it's getting ready to get published, right? You know the connections I was making? You know one of them is going to write me a check. Yeah, look at them. Don't even want to. Okay, I'm going to find somebody. Come on. You know the house I keep driving in the neighborhood looking at? Say it. You know I'm going to get one just like that or better, right? Say it. Say it. How many bathrooms? Say it. Say it. Come on, talk back to me, new spirit. I'm getting ready to get blessed. My home is going to be blessed. My family is going to be blessed. My body is going to be blessed. God didn't bring you to this level to not let you enjoy it. Who am I talking to? You know my kids getting ready to have scholarships all paid for for school. Say it. Come on. You know my son is getting ready to get two, three, four offers. And we're going to just pray about which one we want him to go to, which one we want her to go to. Say it. You know I'm about to be discovered, right? Somebody say, say it. Say it. Somebody say, doors are opening for me. Say it. I still can't. I got to work a while over here. I don't know what. Y'all got it going on over there, but I don't know what's happening over here. Somebody say, you know I'm walking in divine hell. You know I'm not going to experience in 2024 a sick day in my life. Come on, somebody say, say it. Come on. You know doors are opening for me, right? You know I'm getting ready to get promoted on my job, right? You know everything that the devil stole from me in 2020 to 2021 to 2022 is coming back with interest, right? Somebody say, say it. Say it. Say it. God is getting ready to bless me exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I may ask or think. Where? According to his rule. Come on, somebody say, say what you want. God is getting ready to open rivers and streams and doors and avenues and opportunities. The Lord is getting ready to connect me. Come on, somebody say, I'm getting ready to be connected. Come on, I'm getting ready to not delay my shift any longer. I'm getting ready to shift myself to another dimension. I'm getting ready to walk in what I dreamed about. I saw it in a dream. Sharice, I saw it in a dream. Now God is getting ready to make it manifest. Y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all not listening to me. A little bit softer, Darren. Y'all not listening to me. 
Y'all just want me to hurry up. What time is it? You just, they just, Glenn, they just want me to hurry up. Every week, make your daily confession. Make that confession. For all y'all that are sitting online, sitting in this sanctuary, looking at me like I'm crazy, go ahead and wake up tomorrow and tell yourself you're broke. Go ahead and wake up and tell yourself that you're going to die sick. Go ahead and wake up and say, I ain't going to never be able to pay my house no. Go ahead and wake up and confess everything that the enemy has been putting in your spirit and in your head and watch it manifest quickly. But for those of you that have told yourself, I'm tired of accepting what I know is not the benefit and the plan of God. I'm going to get up and I'm going to start today. Somebody say, I'm starting today. I'm blessed and highly favored. God got good things in store for me. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. My children are blessed. My life is blessed. My money is blessed. My family is blessed. I have plenty more to put in store. Somebody say, I have extra, 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 extra. I'm blessing the Lord when I don't feel like it. I'm encouraged when I don't think I should be. I'm talking about what God is going to do for me. Somebody say, I'm walking into my new season. Say, so somebody, you don't got to go with me, but you ain't hindering me. You don't got to go. I can't make you go. I can't make you go. But you ain't hindering me. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Better days are on the way. Better days are on the horizon. God got something good in store for us. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. I'm walking in the benefits of God. I'm walking in the will of God. I'm walking in divine permission. I'm walking in a life of healing and restoration and recovery. I'm getting back everything that the enemy fought me for and stole. Come on, talk to me back, talk back to me. Come on, no more crying. No more feeling sorry for myself. Ain't nobody coming to feel sorry for you no more. Get up and get yourself to your blessed place. I hear the Lord saying, I'm adding to your life years of goodness and mercy Somebody said, get ready, get ready, get ready. Goodness and mercy is following me, baby. Somebody said, I almost didn't come today. I almost let the couch take me home. I almost stayed home. But I got up, I got myself together, and God is getting ready to meet me. Come on, so. Arlen, dream again. Bigger this time. Bigger. Somebody say bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Somebody talking about downsizing. Somebody say, ain't nothing gonna be downsized in my life. Come on, Annie. Come on. Woo! Bigger. Bigger. I'm getting ready to mess you up. Y'all ready? You ready? Tell somebody, I know my potential now. I did not know what I was worth before. So when they offer you $20,000, excuse me, that was when I was 20. 
I'm worth more now. My value went up. My value has gone up. Come. When he put a ring on it, say, when I can see it, that's when I'll accept it. Say, I ain't trying to hurt your feelings, but I can't see that ring. I'm sorry, I just can't see it. I can't get happy about nothing I can't see. When, it, when you make me see it, then I get happy. I get... Somebody say, my value just went up. My worth went up. Oh, come on, when the enemy attacked you, he didn't deme... Oh. He did not devalue you. He made you worth more. Every time the devil attacked David, David's value went up. Did you check? My value just went up. Did you check? She just said my value went up. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You think I'm tripping? You think I'm tripping? I'm not tripping. My value went up. Okay, this is for somebody that's really, this is for you, Minister Demetrius. The devil tried to kill your wife. Wait, you? You ain't even been a sickly person, but it's in this last season you've been sickly. I know what you're going through. It's spiritual elevation. Tacked your wife with a heart attack. Tacked your wife with some other stuff. Somebody say, you did not diminish my value. You made my value go up because every time I got up, it was an added quantity on my, when the enemy be found, when the thief be found, he's got to pay you sevenfold. Every time I give when I ain't got it, I raise my potential. I put a demand on God to give me back a hundredfold return. Cause he knows when I'm broke. He knows when I can't give, but when I give anyway, when I pray on Tuesday nights and I don't feel like it, when my body is wrapped with pain and I'm making it here anyway. God says your value has gone up. Did you hear me? I'm done. Who the devil attacked this week? Because we went on a fast. We went on an hour fast. And the devil lost his crazy mind. Who is who who went through that? I went through it. Did you go through it? Did you go through something up crazy this week? Just because you decided to fast. I read your post. Just you for one little I, we didn't even say we fasted 30 days. We just said we fasted for one baby hour. One little baby hour. And the devil went screaming. Attack them with everything you can think of. Somebody said, but excuse me. Excuse me. It's going to make me go another week because I know God got something he's about to loose in my soul. Y'all better go on and praise him up in this church. Go and tell four people, you getting ready to get everything back with interest. With interest. With interest. Deacon Cordell, with interest. With interest. You thought I was a mess at 30. You really gonna be messed up when I act up at 60. Somebody say, don't laugh because I lost something. You better be watching what I'm getting ready to get back. 
Come on, new spirit. Why y'all trying to hold your praise? Why you trying not to cut loose? text to give because you're getting ready to enter into a season where God is getting ready to say don't make no apologies about nothing don't apologize for nothing don't apologize don't apologize don't apologize minister rosemary No, I'm right. Tack you and put you in the hospital for no reason. Say, you owe me. You owe me. Online, I love you so much. Make sure you get yourself in the, to the posture. Those of you that are not in church today that are leaders or whatever, I want to see your tithe on there. You can't be in leadership and not tithe. Somebody say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You, can't be, you can't be no elder, deacon, minister, whatever you, whoever you are, and not be a tither. I don't really know how anybody can not be a tither, but really, you really ain't going to be in leadership and not tithe. You all don't understand what God is getting ready to confirm in your life. You all don't really understand. When David, I'm done. When David hit the doors to the city of Jerusalem, the very city that he was ran out of, I'm done right here. Elder Lorena, I pass, I, I'm done. I'm done, leaders. Elder Con Con, I'm done right here. When David hit that city, the city of Jerusalem, and they brought him in and they heard that all the people that were against him, Elder, Minister Lucy, that everybody was against him. Saul was dead, John, brother dead. All the, him and his prophet. His prophet. They said, David, you remember all the stuff you did wrong? Yeah, I remember it. Somebody said, yeah, I remember it. I remember it. I remember it. He said, but God have given you the city. He's given you the city. Ireland, he's given you the strength to get back everything that the enemy tried to take from you. He sent you to witness to those people. Now God said, go again, but this time you will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. David gets to the front of the city. This is true, it's Bible. And said he had on his priestly garments, he took those things off. He took them off. And he got to the city and he remembered his pain. Somebody say, remember your pain. Remember. remember it, remember it, remember it. Remember every disappointment, remember it. Remember all the people that, that fought against you, remember it. You're on the threshold, Elder Lorita, of entering into what was ordained for you. This is prophetic. David is in the city, he's entering into the gate. And God said, even if I didn't tell you that I was gonna do it, but I did. I'm getting ready to let you walk in it, and I'm glad you did not give up. When Saul was chasing you, when everybody turned on you, when every priest turned on you, when everybody rejected you, everybody rejected you. Somebody say, everybody has a season of rejection. I don't know why the Holy Ghost is letting me and Dr. Dale have two services and one, because this is literally another service. Somebody say, everybody has to be rejected. But I tell you this, when you're getting ready, when you've been at the lowest point of your life, when you've been rejected by family, loved ones, whomever, work, whatever, church, pastor, whoever, this is when you're getting ready to walk into that season. Yeah. 
You're getting ready to walk into that season. Don't nobody understand you? They talk about us for asking for seed. But churches are closing like... I, wrote, I won't say the name of the church, but I wrote by a church that I knew of very well on land and they closed. I said, wonder where they go. They joined another church and they joined that church and the churches are closed and people are not in church. Why? Because the people of God are listening to the naysayers instead of listening to their preachers and the, and the word of the Lord. No. Don't go to that church. See, that's why I don't go to church. You don't go to church because you don't go to church. Right. Ain't one thing stopped you from going to the bar, to the clubs, to, to nowhere else. I've got to say something very graphic and very... It's going to sound very graphic, but I have to say it. There is no way I will let anybody that sits in a club where they strip and they somebody flying around on a, butt naked on a pole tell me about the church. I would shut my mouth. I wouldn't be at no bar talking about no. I wouldn't be no. You don't, know, you don't see the metaphor that Satan is trying to set up. How are you going to talk about the church when you are at a place that promotes this type of stuff? Y'all don't get it. They don't get it. Do they get it, brother? Well, you can't judge people. I'm not judging the people that are in the club, but the club ain't going to judge me because I'm in church. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody say. My father used to say, I'm, you, you, y'all, not to uh, me, Carolyn, is tell you, when my father would promise that they was, we getting, they was getting a whooping, we'd have to wait all day for that whooping. We knew, when I get home, you getting a whooping. What age group am I in? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Ain't no time out. You gonna, time out is when they took a break and then they gave it to the mother to whoop you. That's abuse. Well, abuse me, because I thank God I've got respect for somebody other than myself. David enters the front of Jerusalem. He sees the city. The same people that laughed at him, the same people that scorned him. He is now their ruler. God said, I'm getting ready to make you ruler over everything that laughed at you and scorned you. See, y'all didn't get that? They laughed at you. But God said, I'm getting ready to make them submit to you. This is the Lord saying to me that you, I got to be careful, okay? I'm looking right at you. You know, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to be careful, Chair. Yep, yeah, I'm getting ready to be careful. God said, I'm getting ready to turn the captivity around. I'm going to take what you followed, and you're not going to follow him that line like that. He's going to follow you. I'm going to be careful. But I see God turning it. I don't care what people say. Look around and say, I don't care what people talk about me about. David comes to the entrance of the city and he begins to weep. Somebody say weep. Then all of a sudden, after he weep, am I right? He started dancing. And everybody starts saying, isn't that David? King of Jerusalem. The Lord said that I am making you king over your oppressors. The thing that kept you in bondage, the king, uh, see, you're thinking of a person. God said it ain't a person. It's a thing. It's a thing. The thing that calls you, the thing that makes you act ugly, the thing that tempts you, the thing that seduces you, God is getting ready to make you ruler over it. And you're going to be able to say no when you used to say yes. That's a word for somebody. I prophesy to you the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that in our distress and in our perplexed situations, God is given ready to give us divine peace, wisdom, and safety if we trust him. Some might say, I trust him. I trust him. I want every one of you, because I know everybody didn't do it, I want you to get, your, get yourself out your seat and come and pay your tithes. Don't let this day go by and you didn't sow to God. Online, do it. Everybody standing. I'm getting ready to dismiss service. Everybody standing. Come on. You said, well, I'll do it next week. No, 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 no. Don't do it next week. Do it today. 
go to Givelify, PayPal, text to give, and sow that seed. And be obedient to God because God said you're on the verge of a, di of a dynamic financial breakthrough. <laughs> Who am I talking to? I ain't talking about giving stupid. I'm talking about giving wisely. Who am I talking to? Somebody in this building, somebody online, God is talking to you. He said, I'm getting ready to turn your financial status around. He said, what you used to budget with is getting ready to be your tip money. It's getting ready to be your tip. Okay. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness that God will do it. God said, I'm getting ready to put you around wealthy people. You're going to try to act funny around them. Make like you don't, well, don't pay for my stuff. God said, let them pay for it. Because they're trying to sow into you to where you're supposed to be going. Okay. This prophetic word last couple of weeks have been on me so strong. It's been on me so strong that I've had to do separate services. It's been on me so strong that the enemy has been trying to tell me that we're not going to make it. And I know we're going to make it. I know we're going to make it. I, Elder Chanel, I know we're going to make it. All right, we're all done. You gave your seed because I'm telling you what is done in September will manifest in October. Hurry up. Online. Some of y'all folk that been online, y'all been hiding online, but y'all better stop that. Because all on Givelify, PayPal, text to give, it has every name of every faithful soul that is given to New Spirit Revival Center, to the kingdom, to the work. Oh, be not deceived. We're doing a work for the Lord. Amen. We're doing a serious work for the Lord. All right. Come on, move this seat. Oh, wait. You, 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 you're giving again? Elder Tanya, thank you, my God. May the Lord continue to bless you financially. May the Lord continue to increase you, to promote you on your job, to open up revenues and streams and doors. Somebody say revenues, streams, and doors in the name of Jesus. Dawn, I stand in agreement with you and Fernando being that debt being broken in the name of Jesus. Yes. I stand in agreement. Somebody say, my pastor is in agreement with me. Woo. My pastor is in agreement with me. Demetrius, God is getting ready to give you an overflow because you are financially overdue. You and your wife are givers. And God said, I'm not blessing you with children so you can suffer, so you will have lack. God says, he, he said, God said, I, I, I prepared for you wealth so that your children will know that my mother and my father are living legacies. Oh, they don't want to help me in here. I, they don't know. I, sometimes I feel like I don't even want to give the type of word that God gives me to certain people, but I know that I know that I know that wealth surrounds you. It surrounds you. Somebody say, it's surrounding me. The offering is blessed. The seed is blessed. And everybody that gave is getting ready to see a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. Online, and you can take the offering away. Let's all stand to our feet. Let me let y'all out of here. Glad to see my sister Elder Carolyn back in church, feeling good, taking baby steps. Somebody say baby steps. Come on. Look, look over there. Look over there. Y'all look over there. Look over there. Y'all look over here. Say you are, you are wealthy, wealthy successful, successful, and whole in the name of Jesus. Your dreams, Your dreams are manifesting and coming to pass. Your children will have scholarships of multiple kinds. Your family will take vacations as you want to, not when you can afford it. God is getting ready to bless you, overflow with dreams, visions, and revelations. And you're getting ready to walk into your healthy, wealthy season in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't even get mad at the people that didn't say it. Just say, I'm back at you, baby. Back at you. May the Lord bless you. Have a good week. We'll see you on Tuesday. Come on, let's bless the Lord and leave up out of here happy. Well, family, wasn't that a word straight from heaven? Oh, my goodness.
Now you take that word and take it with you all through the week to be fuel for your spirit, to strengthen you and keep you. Listen, if you haven't had a chance to give yet, the options for giving are right on the screen. The Bible says the liberal soul shall be made fat. And when your seed leaves your hand, it does not leave your life. And remember, there's a harvest attached to every single seed you sow. So let's always give always in full expectation, knowing and believing and trusting that for every seed we sow, there's a harvest on the way. Please join us for worship services this coming Sunday at 1015 a.m. in person and 11 o'clock a.m. online. And then be sure to join us on Tuesdays online or in person at 730 for prophetic power prayer. And please don't forget to join us for our midweek Bible study service at 730 on Thursday evenings online. At New Spirit Revival Center, you can be sure to get a few things. Sound doctrine, for sure. A word from the Lord, for sure. A sure word, a seasoned word, for sure. And a word that will change your life. Holy Spirit filled services. Holy Ghost led love from the uh from our members and just everything you could want in a church church the way it's supposed to be so come on and join us have a blessed week we love you see you on tuesday